from Florida. Uh, I turned the heat up. Y'all still cold? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Today's scripture comes from John 10, verse 10, King James Verse. And it reads, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. This is John 10, verse 10, King James Version. This is part of uh, Brother Noble's uh, series, Jesus is the way to a better life. Amen. Let everyone that can stand, stand as Brother uh, Byers leads us in prayer. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want everybody to be mindful that uh, the church of Leo Basil was a dead church. Amen. Amen. God wasn't pleased. Amen. And with that, we will go forward. Let us all bow, please. Our Father in heaven, we bow our heads this morning, Lord, just thanking you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. We look up to you with all power, Lord, for we know you hold the whole world in your hands, Lord, and we just thank you for life, Lord, for we know that you are the God of the living and not the God of the dead, yes. Lord. And Amen. We need you on every aspect, Lord, especially our next breath, Lord. And we thank you for Jesus, Lord, who died that cruel, cruel death on Calvary's cross for the whole world sins, Lord. And we thank you for the church, Lord, through uh, what we have salvation through, Lord. And we ask that you would just continue uh, to share your grace with us, Lord, on behalf of letting us be able to go out and confess thy name to the community, Lord, that you died and rose again for each and every one of us, Lord, and that the opportunity for everlasting life is at hand, Lord, and Amen. we also come praying, Lord, that you would just bless the sick and the shut in everywhere, especially those here at the household of faith, Lord, we bow praying on uh, uh, this terrible disease that's sweeping the country, Lord. Amen. We ask that you would just uh, give a remedy for this situation, Lord. We ask uh, that you uh, just give us the knowledge uh, that we stand in need of to overcome this dreadful disease, Lord, and give us the wisdom to apply it, Lord, in each and every way, Lord. We ask that you would just Protect us, Lord, uh, uh, the elderly, Lord, that is easily to become uh, affected, Lord, the small children, Lord, that's uh, easily affected, Lord, and let us be able to uh, look upon our neighbors and help our neighbors, Lord, and love one for another to overcome this dreadful disease, yes. Lord. And Amen. We ask that you would just uh, look upon the church this morning, Lord. We pray on behalf of attendance this morning, Amen. Lord. We ask that uh, uh, you look upon our congregation, Lord, and uh, uh, let edification come forth, Lord. Let us build our congregation up, Lord. Let us always uh, be mindful, Lord, uh, of the commandments that you give us, Lord, uh, uh, on behalf of the church, Lord. And we also come praying for the children Lord, that you would just bless them in each and every way, Lord. Let them stand fast on your word, Lord, and let them be able to uh, make good decisions, Lord, concerning their own health, Lord, and uh, concerning their own welfare, Lord, that they will go forth and punish you, Lord, and always looking up to you, Amen. Lord. And we also come praying, Lord, that you will bless uh, uh, the ones on our sick list, Lord. We Pray for Sister Ruth, Lord, Brother Walker, uh, Sister Ira Bruce, Lord. We pray for Sister Beeson, Lord. We pray for Sister Townsend, Lord, that you will bless each and every one of them, Lord. Bring them up to their most wanted health, Lord, and let them be able to be back in the assembly with us, Lord. We pray for our minister this morning and his wife, Brother Noah Wood, Lord. We uh, pray that you would just continue to bless him. Uh, with the knowledge of your word, Lord, we ask that you would just crown him with that, Lord, yes. and he be able to deliver your word, Lord, in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable to, yes. unto you, yes. Lord, in its simplest form, Lord. And we also come praying 
for the leadership here in Emily Street. Lord, let us do our part, Lord. Let us always look at your word, Lord, before we make any decisions, Lord, and let the church go, church go forth in truth in your name, Lord. And we also come praying, Lord, that you will be with our different ministries to, uh, as we go forward to the edification of this congregation, Lord, that you will just let us all do our part, Lord, to build up your name in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord. For we ask that you would just uh, be with us as we uh, travel to uh, 22nd and uh, 16 and over today, Lord, yes, that Lord. you would give us traveling grace, Lord, to and from that destination, Lord. And Amen. we pray that your name, your name be lifted today uh, over the whole nation and over the whole world, Lord. For it's your commandment that we worship you in spirit and in truth. Starting Amen. here in the street, Lord. Amen. And we pray that you go with us, be with us, keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mark your hymn page 8 for some limitation. Page 8 for some limitation. Trouble in my way.
Without him, you cannot do anything. Yeah. And with it, within him, you can't go wrong. Amen, somebody. Yeah. As he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. As he has said, it cannot be changed nor negotiated. Because without Jesus ahead of your life, you won't have salvation. When all is said and done. But again, it's always a pleasure to look upon you to spend this time together in worship service to give God the praise and the adoration that he so rightly deserves. Amen. So I understand that today that we're going to have two audiences today. In other words, we're going to have those that have been in the church a long time. I believe that this message from God is going to reinforce your faith. But if you don't already know the Lord, you'll have a great opportunity to get to know him better. Amen. And you'll be shown the benefits Amen. of serving the Lord. Amen. Of course, we are continuing to talk about Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. And of course, we're going to continue to do that in the next few weeks. So I encourage you to invite your friends and your family. This is a good opportunity for them to come forward and say, what must I do in order to be saved? Amen. But I want you to turn to John chapter 10, verse number 10. And we'll get preparation for the word of God. That's going to be a blessing to our heart. As I thank my wife, of course, for continuing to love and support you, Henry Street, to come out here and worship and fellowship uh, once again. I know that, and I know I'm talking to some strong Christians here today, but one of the things that Satan is going to do going forward, I can already see it coming. You know, with the coronavirus hitting every continent right now. Amen. Amen. That what you're seeing on the news is that people are saying people should not congregate. Now, who are you going to tell not to congregate? Because congregate, first and foremost, comes to the church. Amen. Because we are the congregation Amen. of congregations. Amen, somebody. Amen. So don't you dare fear what's actually on the news. You keep coming to worship service. Amen. Amen. Because one of the first places that's going to clear out is the church. Because that's what Satan is going to use against you. 
But I tell you what, if you're going to die, die in the Lord. Amen. Amen, somebody. I ain't going to be dying, cowering out in my house. Amen, somebody. I'd rather be in the house of God Amen. if God decides to take me that way. But I'm not talking grimly. I don't want you to think that way and think in a dark sense. Because what God wants, can't nobody stop it. Amen. I don't care what disease hit this planet. Huh? I don't care if my bank accounts get wiped out. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 33, what did he say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. And his righteousness and what? All these things Amen. shall be added unto you. God will take care of you no matter what the world do. Amen. 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 Just keep that in, in your mind and don't be fearful. Fear God instead of what man can do yeah. unto you, including the disease. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse number 10. I believe I need to say that to you too. Make sure you keep that on your mind because the world is panicking. Amen. The Christian has no reason to panic mm -hmm. because we serve the one that has said, I am with you always, Amen. even until what? The end Amen. of the world. Let's go to John 10, verse number 10 for a minute. I don't want to be uh, too long with preliminary co uh, comments here because we got a deep word this morning we need to get into. But John 10, verse 10, when you have somebody say amen. amen. And here's what Jesus says. This is out of the King James Version. It says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it, what, more abundantly. So again, this is the context of this verse, is that Jesus is contrasting and comparing his leadership to the corrupt leadership that the Jews were under at the time, right? He's saying that they were filthy, they were no good, they were corrupt. But when you're with me, I don't come to take nothing from you. I come to give, is what he was saying, right? He said what? They, they might have what? Life. That they might have it what? More abundantly. So that's our topic here today. It's going to be Jesus is the way to a better life. And they also set your, your spiritual compass in the right direction. Last week, we were talking about Jesus being the way to eternal life. We are talking about the eternity side, the hereafter. But today, we're going to talk about the today. What does Christ have to offer you right now before you close your eyes for the last time? Is that all right now, church? Amen. All right, so let's look at this for a moment. Let's back up and then set our sights right so we can receive the word of God. But if you notice today... People are doing everything under the sun to gain what they believe is a better life. I don't know if you've been there, sisters, but I've been here myself. You see, a lot of folks will say, if I can only lose a few pounds, everything will get better. huh? And they go on these crash diets. huh? And they end up starving themselves to the point where they look like they're deaf on two feet. Amen, somebody. And then eventually what? They go back and just gain that weight all the way back because they went through some scam type of diet that really wasn't helpful for them. And in fact, it, was, it hurt them and made their lives even worse. You see, a lot of folks mess up money like crazy. They're always trying to get rich quick schemes. Amen, somebody. And they end up being worse than what they started. Amen. Amen. And see, sometimes, folks, what people will say all the time, especially you sisters, if I can find my tall, dark, and handsome, everything will be all right. Amen, somebody. But sometimes when you leave a chocolate bar in your pants too long, I'm talking about in your pocket, it melt and make it worse. No. Amen, somebody. And so obviously, the one thing you're going to find out is that you can't run the people in the hopes of making your life better. It don't work that way. Either. You know, some of those, many of y'all know it's my birthday, and of course I'm in that middle age, but I'm not in a middle age crisis. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Me, I'm not going to go out and I'm not going to buy a Corvette. I'm not trying to leave my wife and get a supermodel girlfriend. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When men get old, we think we still got it, or we're going to figure out a way to get it back. Amen. <laughs> and so we try to buy our way back, Amen. you know, into uh, that young boy lifestyle once again. And so what do they do? They end up doing what? Making themselves worse than what they started with now. And see, some folks, they try to spin their way into a better life. They amass huge amounts of money. The house on the hill, the luxury cars, again, the supermodel girlfriend, only to be disappointed that they could not find happiness 
in all of these things, huh? Yeah. You see, again, not only do they do get rich quick schemes, sometimes they run it down to the casino. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. They'll play the numbers on the lottery, whether it's legal or illegal, they'll play it. Amen. 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 Only to end up worse off financially compared to what they started with. See, if you don't understand games or chances like the casinos, the lottery, and things like that, do you already realize that you're already a loser the moment you start playing it? Yeah. Amen, somebody, because that house is set up against you. You see, that money is so tempting. Alabama trying to get a lottery now. Amen, somebody. Oh, and I hope they never get it because it is nothing but a racket. You see, what's so hypocritical about the government when it comes to these lottery facts? You know, when you're running it illegally, They'll call it a racket. Huh? But when they put it inside their own, when they make it legal for themselves, it's all right for you to do it. That's nothing but what? Hypocrisy. They only want to make a little money. They don't care about their citizens because they already know from the beginning they're ripping their citizens off. You see, here are some facts about the odds of winning a Mega Millions jackpot and the Powerball jackpot that I took from CNN. See, the odds of winning the Mega Millions jackpot, now listen to this, this will blow you away if you haven't got it yet, is 1 in 302,575,350. Now you tell me you spend $2, you think you're going to get $200 million. It don't make no sense. Because even if you play a game like this, think about this now. You bought a million lottery tickets. Do you realize you still got a chance of a drop in the bucket a winning, and you still have gone and spent a million dollars and will come with nothing back? Oh, man, that's common sense now. So how can people think that you can spend a measly $2, you're going to come out with $200 million? It's common sense, y'all. You see, the odds, again, of winning the Powerball jackpot is not much better. It's one in 292 million. 201,338. So common sense is going to tell you you are doing nothing but throwing your money away Amen. by playing these rackets. And they, they want folks to throw it away. You see, they, 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 they put an emotional attachment to it now. See, I've lived under this in Michigan. We've had the lottery since I, you know, I was a little kid, if not before that. And what they do now, oh, we're going to attach it to the schools. Mm -hmm. huh? In other words, that's like using a child for a human shield. Huh? So that you would not want to say, oh, we want to get rid of this now. Oh, amen, somebody. So that they are able to keep these things and, and, and milk you out of your money, folks. There are rackets set up to take advantage of you. You see, what's just so hypocritical about the whole thing, you know, let a preacher rip you up. I ain't never going out of that church. Boy, you'll lose everything in the lottery. And still on your last breath. Can't barely breathe on a bit of lead, scratching another ticket. Oh, amen, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hypocrisy. To its fullest. Oh, amen, somebody. You see how the devil got some folks' minds just messed up. But you know, that's a humorous way of saying this. Remember, the devil's solution always have fine print. But the devil's going to put a smart, fine print so small you can't see it with a magnifying glass. Amen, somebody. He ain't going to tell you the risk of what you're doing. You see, as we like to say here, he's going to promise you pie in the sky. But by the end of the day, you're going to end up with crumbs on the table or nothing else at all. You see, folks, you might let me turn, change gears a little bit here. He tells you to drink away your troubles via alcohol, too. But now let me tell you something about that. Heavy drinking, he don't give you the fine pricks on that. Heavy <coughs> drinking causes cirrhosis of the liver, <coughs> fatty liver disease, anemia, certain types of cancers, seizures, gout, weakened immune system, digestive problems, increased chance of diabetes, and more that we can't even name. He don't tell you that stuff up front, do you? Huh? He don't tell you. That yes, you can drink it away, you think, but when you wake up, you're going to have a hangover and your bill still. Amen. Huh? Man. If not worse. So you're, you're putting yourself in a worse situation than what you started with. As I mentioned to you earlier, you can't run to other people in this world to make a better <laughs> life for yourself. This we know because we live in a day and age where God told us up front that the world is going to become more and more selfish, more and more self-centered. 
and more prone to betray each other. God told us this would be the state of the world in which we live actually today. You see, when you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 and verse number 5, look what God said. Now, I know you're familiar with this in the church, but let me bring it back to your holy remembrance for a minute. Look what God told us our world will be like today. It said what? This know also. I'm talking about 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number uh, 1 through 5. This know also that in what? The last days, folks, where do we live? In the last days, right? Perilous times shall come. Huh? What is men's character going to be like? Lord, what he's telling you in the next verse in verse number 2. We're talking about in the way that we live today. Huh? He says, for men shall be what? Lovers of their own selves. They don't care nothing about you. It says what else? Covetous. In other words, they're greedy. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemous. Sound like the White House. But let me keep going. Disobedient. <laughs> to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without what? Natural affection. That's how a, 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 a mother can leave a child in the trash can. Even that's not natural to them anymore. Without natural affection. Truth breakers, that means folks you can't trust. False accusers, liars, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. What else does it say? Traitors, heady, high-minded, meaning arrogant, lovers of pleasures more than what? Lovers of God. Folks, that's what's going on this morning. People love to be on a fishing bank instead of in the house of God. People love to be in their bed right now. Instead of the house of God. People love to be able to make double time on their job today. Because that brings them pleasure, right? right? Instead of the house of God. That's the area in which we live in. But God is saying, look now, they're going to be good actors. They're going to look like they're holy. But underneath, they're going to be nothing but the devil in disguise. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's what he means by that. He says in this next verse, in verse 5, saying what? Having what? A form. Of godliness on the outside, they can look holy, but actually, what denying the power thereof? They're up. They're up. about God. God says, in these type of people, what are you supposed to do? From such, turn away. Stop associating with folks like that because why? That will rub off on you. And lastly, we can keep. We must keep in mind that even if we obtain money in the future, it will never be the answer to all of our problems. Oh, hey, man, somebody. Y'all need to quit going home and say, I can't wait till 638 hit. Amen. Because you ain't going to get no better off. Amen. Even if your number come in. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like you're holy. It don't know what I'm talking about here today. <laughs> My number. You've been playing it for two years. Amen. <laughs> ain't came in then. Ain't coming in now. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Be, be smart. <laughs> about these man. things. Now. And so God is showing us, folks. Even money is never going to be the answer to your problems. Amen. God forewarns us. He tells us to stay away from trusting in money anyway in many passages of Scripture. Let me give you a few examples and we'll move on. First Timothy chapter 6, verse number 10 is probably the most, uh, the, the most famous one of them all. Look what God tells us. He says what? For the love of money is what? The root of all evil. What is the root? The beginning. The main cause of concern. So you trying to tell me that you say that's going to be your solution? No, God is saying that's going to be the beginning of the troubles in your life. Your love of what? Money. For the love of money is what? The root of all evil, which while somewhat coveted after, no, they were greedy, they chased it. They have done what in the process? They have what? Erred from the faith they walked away from being a Christian because of money. And what pierced themselves through with what? Many sorrows. Meaning what? They regret it. And they regret it to the point that it just stabs them in the heart of all the mistakes that they had made that they didn't have to make chasing money. Think about it. how many men have lost their wives and their children. They may have become financially good, but have become a horrible husband. Have become a, what, a horrible father. These folks, when they go to their grave, they often have regrets saying, I wish I would have done things a different way. My wife was more precious than my bank account. Huh? My child, they grew up before I know it. 
Huh? And I didn't get to spend any time with my children. God is saying what? You put yourself down. Your love of money was greater than your love for your family. Your love of money was greater than anybody else. And now you regret it. Now you're going down to your grave with regrets. Oh, amen, somebody. God is saying that's the attitude or that's the, 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 the consequence that you're going to go through when lo the love of money is the rule of your heart. You see, Proverbs 11. Now, remember, we, said we call Proverbs and Psalms our common sense books. It teaches us how to uh, conduct ourselves on every day, every common thing that you can think of. Here is practicality for the Christian life. So Proverbs 11, verse 27 and verse number 28. Look what the Bible tells us. It says, he that trusts in riches shall what? Fail, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Folks, when you go to Proverbs 23, verse number 5, it tells you how much you can trust uh, money and riches, which means you cannot. When you look at Proverbs 23, verse number 5, it says, Wilt thou set thine eyes? Upon that which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly as what? An eagle toward heaven. Amen, somebody. And so obviously then, God is saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Amen. Added unto you. He's saying what? Be spiritually minded. Don't worry about the material side of life, because God is going to provide that for you anyway. As long as you're seeking for your soul to be saved and you're trying to live right, God got the rest of it for you. So here comes the question as we shortly come to a close. Ask yourself, so where can we go? It's like the old hymn goes, where could I go? Seeking what church? A refuge for my soul. Well, we know the answer is not the mega millions. We know it's not Powerball. It's not the arms of somebody else. The answer is Jesus, Jesus, and nobody but Jesus. Think about it again. Financial security is actually in Jesus. We just said, let me say it one more time. What did Matthew 6, verse 33 says when it comes to our financial status? He says, but seek ye what first? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall what, church? Be added unto you. Peace of mind. Is in Jesus, not at the bottle of an alcohol uh, 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 drink that you may want. Peace of mind is in Jesus because he said in John chapter 16, verse number 33, he said, These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have what? Where is it? It's not at the bottom of alcohol, is it? It's not in drugs. It's not in anybody else. He said, In me, he's talking about himself, right? You might have what? Peace. Peace is in Christ. A better life is in Christ. Financial security is in Christ. These are the things God gives us now. Huh? If you're rooted in the faith that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and that's deeply rooted in your heart, can't nobody take it from you? That means nobody can take your peace from you either. Mm -hmm. Look what he says. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have what? Peace. In the world you shall have what? Tribulation. Well, what if I'm a millionaire? In the world, you will have tribulation, huh? What if I get my Prince Charming, as you ladies would say? What if I get my dream girl? What does it say? You're still going to have what? Tribulation. tribulation, huh? What if I get the house on the hill? What if I get the luxury cars? What if I get a ring on every finger? The Bible says what? In the world, you shall have still tribulation. You're going to have trouble because these things are not what the solution for you. Jesus comforts us. He says, but be of what? Good cheer. Huh? Smile. Because why? I have overcome the world. Jesus is showing us that he is proof that what he's saying is true. Huh? He is proof that he is all power in heaven and in earth. Because nobody else was able to get out of the grave never to die ever again. Huh? Amen. Nobody else is anointed or appointed that he is. King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen, somebody. Nobody else is going on that judgment day, step on the head of the serpent, talking about Satan. Amen, somebody. And cast him into the lake of fire, prepared for what? The devil and his angels. Matthew 25, verse 31 to verse number 46 teaches us that on the judgment day to come. And, of course, eternal salvation, the greatest gift, the greatest reward, the greatest goal ever obtained, is only in Jesus 
and Jesus alone. Because the word of God says this about him. In Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. And this applies to every Christian that ever lived that will stay faithful to Jesus unto death. Look what he says. There is therefore now what? No condemnation. Huh? That means what? No judgment against you. No wrath of God against you on the judgment day. Instead, God says what? There is there are now no condemnation to them which are what? In Christ Jesus. Who walk not. Now, this is our responsibility, right? What he say? Who walk not after the flesh. That means don't live rebellious to God, right? But after what? The Spirit. Remember, that's a capital S. That means after what the Holy Spirit commands, right? And what did the Holy Spirit command? Everything in the New Testament of the Bible. Amen, somebody. He said, as long as you have that, God is not going to have anything to hold against you on the judgment day. Amen, somebody. You're going to walk down those streets of gold. You'll be able to redeem the treasures in the heaven that you're waiting on down here. Amen, somebody. Remember, God said, don't allow your, your mind to be centered on things down here, but let your church be what? In heaven. But in your responsibility then is what? Not to walk after the what? Flesh, but after what? The spirit. The spirit. Amen, somebody. I think you got it here this morning. And so the question then becomes then, the better life is in Jesus Christ and nowhere else. The better life, I'm talking about in Jesus Christ, is now and forever. The better life is the one in which you're, 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 you're in the bosom of Jesus as his disciple. You are a child of God. Your life on earth and in heaven gets better for you if you give your life to Christ Jesus in truth and in serious. Any believers out there here today? So the question then begins, becomes, will you make the choice to have a better life now and forever by coming to Jesus today for <coughs> salvation? That is a decision that you're going to have to make for yourself. May God bless and keep you. This portion of the message is yours. We'll continue this on the next occasion about Jesus being the better way. Huh? Now and forever. So again, I encourage you to invite your family, your friends out. Because all we're going to do is talk about Jesus, Jesus, and more about Jesus. Is that all right? And hopefully they say, what must I do to become a part of this? What must I do to gain a better life? What must I do, most of all, to have what? Eternal life waiting for me. Well, then let me answer that question. Well, God tells us, he calls it the plan of salvation. It starts in Romans 10, verse number 17, where God says for, uh, uh, that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what, church? The word of God. John 3, verse number 16 summarizes that word. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have what, church? Everlasting life. you got to believe that Jesus Christ is literally the son of God. you got to believe he is the one documented in the word of God that went to the cruel cross of Calvary, had nails in his hands and his feet, was on the cross uh, uh, for hours in agony, all because he said this before he went there, greater love hath no man than this, that a man do what? Lay down his life for his friends. He wants to be your friend here today. But just like any other friendship, it's got to be reciprocal. In other words, he can't just spend his love on you, you don't return no love to him, huh? Returning your love is to obey the plan of salvation. And you already heard two parts of that. You've heard the word of God, but now you have to believe that he's the son of God, which also means he's your Lord and Savior. You must take on the Christian lifestyle. Jesus calls this repentance in Luke 13, verse 3 and number 5. That means you're turning away from a sinful, rebellious lifestyle unto one that God would approve of instead. The fourth part of the plan of salvation is that you have to confess Jesus as the Son of Almighty God, which means your Lord. You'll see that in Romans 10, verse 9 and verse number 10. Then after that, you have to also put your faith in action by going down into the watery grave of baptism. That pool right behind me is ready for you. See, the good thing about baptism, is baptism does at least three things. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 22, verse number 16, Why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Wash away your sins means God gives you a new beginning. That's when God forgives you of all the sins that you have committed. So obviously then, baptism is the gateway 
to God's forgiveness. But also baptism is the gateway to your relationship with Jesus himself. That's what Galatians 3 verse 27 talks about. Well, as I paraphrase it, that those who have been baptized have been what? Baptized into Christ. That's when you become one with him. That's when the relationship starts. And of course, that's when your status with God also uh, changes. That's when God takes you from the status of sinner and makes you saint. He takes you from the status of unforgiven to forgiven. And he also takes you from the status of unsaved to saved. Because Jesus says in Mark 16, verse number 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. In other words, he won't make it into heaven. He'll be eternally, eternally punished instead. So is this something that you want? This is the better life being offered to you. But God is not going to make you do anything. Huh? Man. Do you want anybody that say, I love you because you made them do it? Huh? No, you want that to be something they come to on their own. Otherwise, what? The, the love is not sincere, it's not genuine, it is not true. So the question is, are you going to return God's love today? Well, all you got to do, as I mentioned to you now, your action now is to hear the word of God, believe it, repent of your sins, confess Jesus as the Son of God, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sin. And God will save you if you stay faithful unto death. Remember, church, it all applies to us as well. After you become a Christian, Revelation 2, verse 10, should always be in the forefront of our minds. Where Jesus said, what? Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a what? Crown of life. Faithful means stay committed to what you started. Keep believing and obeying Jesus to the end, and heaven's going to be your home. Well, you might be asking yourself, well, what if I mess up? Well, you will. We all do. Huh? That's why God put mercy in the Bible for Christians that mess up. That's why he put Acts 8.22 and 1 John 1, 7 and verse number 10, that he gives us second chances through that. He tells us if we're a Christian that's fallen short, have done something that's rebellious to God, all we have to do is repent, meaning leave it alone, come back to God, live righteously, confess that fault to him and ask him to forgive us. And he will do just that. So this is your opportunity right now. If you have not become a Christian, it's your time to come down that aisle. Give me your, your hand, God, your heart. All I'm going to do is ask you. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You confirm your faith. We'll both go down in the water grave of baptism right behind me. You'll go down a sinner, but you'll rise a saint. You'll go down unsaved, but you'll rise saved if you stay faithful unto death. You're a Christian that has fallen short. Don't take no more time out there in the world. Don't take no more time out there unsaved. Because God does still say in James 2 verse 20, faithful thou works is dead. Amen, somebody. Amen. In other words, you don't know when your last day going to come. Amen. So it's time to get right with God right now. Because tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Won't you come? We're going to sing that song of invitation right now. Won't you come? It's together. We stand and sing the Lord's invitation. Won't you? Have you been to Jesus?